All right, guys, I'm over here at uh, Cassone's RV again. I had a customer contact me a couple weeks ago. He lives in Long Beach and saw some of my videos on the roof, and he has a roof issue on his Winnebago. It's a 2004 Winnebago Sightseer, and he had his radius blow off. So he contacted me, and again, I'm really shocked anybody wants to drive this thing, drive, uh, bring me anything from California, but I'm, I'm always willing to help. Uh, we made arrangements, and because my shop is so full right now, uh, especially with that Travel Supreme and interior-wise, I made arrangements with Cassone, so they were nice enough to let me rent a uh, bay from them. I'm gonna do another roof job. So let's take a look at this thing, because uh, it's kind of like a uh, life, it seems like. Not everything went as well as we'd hoped it went already, but everything's gonna be fine. So here it is. This is actually a really nice uh, motorhome. He's done a lot of custom work on it. The biggest issue we had is his ignition switch broke on the way here. So he had to be towed in. So you'll notice the chalk box right there because the drive shaft, if you can kind of make out, is laying on the ground right there because it got towed in. The tow truck driver couldn't hook it back up because this is a workhorse chassis and a workhorse chassis the park brake is actually located on the drive shaft now because the ignition switch has problems we can't get the dry the park brake the auto park to disengage so first things first i have to put a ignition switch and then put a drive shaft on this so i can get it into the bay and start doing the roof and then we'll do a quick tour before i tear this roof apart so hopefully it shouldn't take too long now i won't bore you guys too much with this uh so we got to turn it on. Oh, now it turned off. There you go. So when you let off the ignition, it it it, it turns off. And like right there. Oh, see, I had to jiggle it to get it in that position. So at any rate, this is like the old style uh, steering column. It has a rod that actually goes down to the ignition switch at the base of the the steering uh, the column itself. So I've just moved a lot of things out of the way so everybody can see. There's a, uh, a steering wheel cover, or steering column cover. Had it cut off out of the way. Right here you have your uh, transmission lock linkage so you can't shift when the uh, thing's in drive. Uh, I think this is your steering lock. Seems right. So if I turn the key on, you probably see that thing snap down. There you go. And then this rod right there. This is actually what goes to the ignition switch down underneath all of that, right behind the uh, cable driven. So I just have to get everything disconnected to undo that. So right here, you got to squeeze or uh, undo this uh, connection point right there with those plastic tabs. There's a whole bunch of them that go around snap into place. Of course, all the plugs have to be unplugged. There's a whole bunch of them. Two on this side, one on the other side. And then just undo the hardware, pull this whole thing out. And then hopefully go get a switch. I've unplugged the steering lock. There's the uh, the cable, it just snaps in. It's just got all these uh, tabs that you have to undo and it'll come out. Now on the ignition switch side, there's two plugs. You have a black plug and a blue plug and I was just unplugging that. It's hard to see. I don't know if you can see that top left one looks a little bit overheated. Let me look at this plug. Look at that. Now the bottom left one looks a little overheated. So I think it's probably safe to say this was a problem. So I just have to undo all the bolts that hold it in place and get a new one. All right, so we got a uh, replacement Eklund brand, a little bit higher quality. Uh, not a sponsor, that's for sure. And it should be direct replacement. We'll find out here shortly. It's a little different, but very similar. So how this works is that rod just goes in and moves this uh, plunger up and down. So when you turn the key, you lift up on that and start it. 
so this is actually the ignition switch. That's it. And I guess that was uh, the normal run. Must be pulling a lot of, a lot of juice at sometimes when it's always on. But I guess it's always. It was a 2004, so it's about 15 years of always being on, right? So the, all this does is move that rod up and down. <laughs> this rod right there just moves that rod up and down. Sometimes it's good. We can take a video. That way you know how to put things back together. Here's the old switch there. It mounts like that, upside down, from what you think it would be. So I got that one bolt back in, the double-sided stud. And then I can put everything back together and plug everything back in. Let's do that. All right, so let's see. I got that linkage put back on. We just have to plug this back in. Get that back on. So this just should snap back in place. There you go. Plug that guy in. Come on, guy. I did get those grounds put back on, too, in case you were curious. There's plugged back in. And that's plugged back in. There's the keys. Let's hope for the best. Hey, look at that. It's still running. Gotta check engine light there. Uh-oh. So yeah, everything looks good there. I just need to button this back up. Then I can put a drive shaft back on. Then I can drive this thing back in the shop and then I can start working on the roof. It's always something. Why is it always something? Alright, so with that, should be the last bolt to tighten up. And make sure that um put a neutral with the ignition on. No no engine running. Definitely don't want to have this flinging about. But you have to have it in neutral. Otherwise, auto park will set if you're in gear or in park. Alright. Alright, here we go. Tell you that check engine light and the ABS light's still on, though. My brakes feel pretty soft. I have to hook up the scanner to see what might be going on with that. But that's neither here nor there. Let's get this back in the bay. All right, well, the check, uh, check engine light stayed on, but the ABS light did turn off. So, check engine light still on, ABS light out. Let's uh, try the Altel manual. It's like a 2003, likely, right? Yeah. This is auto scan. I don't want that, did I? Well, I'm scanning. Trouble code. Read code. Current history. Uh -huh. What do you think? Let's clear all these. What do you think, Chad? It's a good fit. Okay. The only ones that aren't pertaining to the issue is the uh, O2 sensor ones. Brake switch, slow circuit. Escape. 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 I'm sure. I'm doing it. Hey, look. Check engine lights off. We'll see if it comes back on after we run this for a while. None of those seem to be anything I was going to think they were. Ah, no, I'm not sure. All right, well, we passed no fault at this point. Now I can exit. And now, you know what I can do, Chad? I can start tearing this roof apart.
turn this thing off. 